The United States has asked medical professionals seeking to work in America to apply for a work visa at the nearest U.S. Embassy as part of measures to strengthen the health system to contain the coronavirus pandemic in the country. The government, in a statement published on Friday, advised foreign medical professionals already in the U.S. to consult with their sponsors to extend their programs. According to World Health Organization statistics, as of 12 p.m. on Friday, 63,570 people have been infected with the virus and nearly 844, 884, I beg your pardon, have died in the U.S., which is quickly becoming the new epicenter of the outbreak. And joining us live by phone is a public health practitioner, Folajimi Adebowale. Thank you, Folajimi, for joining us. Thank you for having me around. What's your thought on the decision by the U.S. asking doctors and nurses to apply for visa amid the outbreak of COVID-19? Well, I think the information was misconstrued. Okay. The message was directed for people who had already had their own um, immigration <laughs> visa. <laughs> For, for people already within the U.S., not those outside the U.S. Exactly. Okay. Now, but even before the outbreak of COVID-19, a, a lot of medical personnel uh, have been leaving Nigeria for greater pastures abroad. What are the factors responsible for this transition? Primarily economic factors. That is all. Okay. Now, now, Jimmy, now, now COVID-19 is actually getting more serious in Nigeria, and, and the services of these medical personnel are becoming paramount. What should the federal government do at this time to, to boost their morale? Well, there's going to be a lot of problem if you feel you could just focus on the doctors only and the nurses. Remember, they are just one, one part of the civil service. If you boost their morale and increase their salary, other sectors in the civil service will also ask for an increase. Then you need to consider those in the private practice, which are the larger population, who will boost their morale. So the issue or the solution has to be extensive. You can't just intervene briefly. Like I said, it's primarily an economic issue. And unless the economic factor increases across all levels, Doctors will keep leaving the country. And is there anything, anything, any mitigating factor why this can be done across board? Please come and again. That, is there anything mitigating? What, what factor are mitigating these being carried out across board, both the public and the private sector, the, the health sector, the doctors? I mean, and shouldn't we now begin to consider it more seriously in, in the face of this pandemic? Well, you need to consider a very broad and extensive intervention in that regard. That will involve the federal government supporting private hospitals. Then a very comprehensive health care center has to come on board. Because the, the weakness in the primary health care center is felt in the secondary and the tertiary. That is why the general hospitals and the teaching hospitals are regularly overcrowded and the workers are primarily stressed up and overworked. So if you want to solve that issue, you have to solve that primarily. Then also remember that we live in an endemic environment. In most private practices, 65% of patients are malaria cases. This is not helpful to the economy. It is not helpful to the doctors. It is not helpful to the population. Unless you remove that huge burden of malaria cases, the health workers will be overworked, the health care system may not be reformed easily, and you will end up having the same situation. So your intervention may not work on the long run. Uh, let, let's consider so, best international practices um, in, in the global world. Is it out of place for, for government to fund, to extend some kind of funding to, private, to the private health sector? Worldwide, evidence has shown that universal health coverage is the best form of practice whereby government actually takes up funding of all sectors of um, health care. Both, both private and public. Both private and public are yeah. fully funded by the government. Yeah. Best, countries with the best health care system in the world have this practice. So... The, and you need to really have a buoyant economy to do that. On the flip side, you could actually increase taxes because uh, some of these countries that practice universal health coverage take up to 40% tax. 
in order to be able to fund um, the healthcare system. Healthcare generally is expensive. Okay. So if, if we can increase the tax to that level, which on the other hand means that less income for the general public, well, we could be able to fund the universal healthcare system. All right, Jimmy. Now, 11 new cases has been recorded while the government is trading over 4,000 potential carriers. What does this suggest about the approach to tackling this virus in Nigeria? Well, my thoughts about tackling the virus is not the popular one. A, a viral spread is hard to contain. Like I said before, sometimes you make this attempt, they look like blind attempts. You're, no, you're not really sure what you're catching or what you're not catching. If you block the air borders, what about the land border and the sea borders? What about people that came in asymptomatic and later became symptomatic? The good news in all this issue is that over 80% of those who were tested positive were travelers or people that came into the country. And right now, um, I think today makes it like 30 days from our very first case. That is from 1 to 81. I don't think we've done badly. Other countries were far worse. When you talk about a viral spread, we've not really gotten viral exactly. So I think we've done quite well in containing it. Okay. All right, John, before I let you go this afternoon, for Jimmy, now th there is an imminent lockdown in view. Uh, would you advocate for this? Most definitely. The lesser we keep in touch, the lesser the chances of the virus spreading. So social distancing is very, very key at this point. You can't compromise on that. All right. Public health expert, Fola Jumia Debawali, thank you for joining us and for your contribution. You're welcome.